Okay, hi everyone. Today I'm presenting on the artist Jeff Koons. Um, so he is, um, he's best known um, for his pretty much incredibly high cost, high profile, um, just really complicated projects. And he's actually the highest selling living artist in the world as of right now, I believe. Um, so yeah, he's like a mega star in the art world, pretty much. Um, he's best known for the large scale steel balloon dogs. The picture that you see on the bottom left is an example. Um, um, he was um, pretty inspired um, mostly just by attending his art history class on the first day of college. Um, he really just found out like, um, you know, this is what I want to go into pretty much is what he decided on that day. Um, so Kunz is mainly inspired by ready-made objects. So for example, like ashtrays or furniture. Um, his dad actually owned a furniture store and so he was really inspired by like all the um, different styles of like furniture and stuff that he would have in the store. Um, growing up, he would see all of that. Um, and it's, so it's something that's already existing that, um, becomes a work of art that he makes into a work of art. Um, and he actually has over a hundred people slash artists employed at his studio in Chelsea, New York. Um, they all work, um, under his very precise instructions so um you know every little thing that he tells them to do for each project they have to follow those rules in order to make you know such large-scale um works of art um and this might be a bit controversial for some people but you also do have to remember that you know michelangelo and all those renaissance artists um when they had big projects they had their own assistants working for them too. So, um, and it seems like Coons is very set on the idea that you haven't really seen his work until you've seen it physically. So you can't really experience his work until you've seen it in person. Um, he wants the viewer to interact with his pieces, especially um, with his reflective pieces, as he, as for an example, the balloon dog. Um, so yeah, let's see. Um, another reflective piece is in the middle, that that by one. Um, and we'll talk about that in the next slide after this one. But um, I did kind of want to go into the way he talks about his work. Um, he makes it seem like um, it's like an ongoing piece of performance art almost. So. He's always talking about how art teaches you how to feel and how it makes you more engaged with life. Um, so the creative process is also very important to him. Um, and but above all the other things, um, I think he thinks that the viewer's experience is of utmost importance. Um, and so the image on the left is, um, is, I think it's just called Play-Doh, I think, but it's made of polychromed aluminum. Um, there's like five different unique versions of that. Um, let's see. And then the one on the right is Michael Jackson and Bubbles. That's the name of that one. Um, that one is made of porcelain, actually. Um, and I did kind of want to talk about this piece a little bit. Um, this is a quote from Jeff Koons himself, so I'll just read that really quick. He says, Michael was there as a contemporary Christ. If you look at the sculpture, it's actually, um, it actually is like the Pieta. It has the same configuration, the triangular aspect, so it's making reference to that. He is there like a contemporary Christ figure to assure people that it's okay. So I thought it was interesting that he... Um, he thought he thought that about Michael Jackson and 
thought so highly of it that he decided to make, you know, a porcelain sculpture of it. Um, he also comments about being in awe of Michael's talent, and he um, was very intrigued by by his talent and because he was a live sensation, you know, so. And um, with this piece, he said he's trying to communicate self-acceptance, and he needed enough um, an authoritative figure there to let people know that it's okay, that you can go along with the self-acceptance of your own cultural history. Um, let's see, and then the middle one is is Popeye, the, and it's made of, um, it's made of the, let's see, mirror polished stainless steel. So, and then it has a transparent color coating, and then we'll talk about that in this slide. Um, let's see, I think he has a few different versions of this, so that's why it's from 2009 to 11. Um, he says a few interesting things about this, and it, it also brought up a lot of controversy up amongst like art critics and stuff like that, so I can see why, but I also think it's true what he has to say about it. So I'll just read a, another quote from him. Um, he says, you have a sense of transcendence taking place here. With Popeye, it's transcendence of male energy. He eats that, that spinach and he transcends into this strength. That's the art, the spinach is art. And art can change your life, it can expand your parameters, it can give this fastness to life. So he's saying that if um, if you think in like ancient terms, as you can see in the bottom picture, you know, Popeye is like surrounded by these ancient sculptures and paintings, um, the symbol of male energy is the spinach in his work. So he's just comparing the two, um, trying to make it you know, kind of like the same as you would look an ancient piece of art. Um, he also says that we have to, um, one of the things he's trying to communicate to people from his art is that you're perfect. In life we have to first learn to accept ourselves and then we can have this transcendence into the exception, acceptance of others. Um, I thought it was interesting how he put the piece in the middle of, you know, a completely different genre and time period of art. Um, and it was kind of funny how he thought, you know, this cartoon character was very similar to, like, these medieval sculptures. And, you know, in a way I can see where he's coming from with that idea. But um, here's a few more images of his work. Um, and then the puppy on the, the bottom image it, on the right, um, that's just all made of flowers. And I think it's always kept, just always maintained where it is. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and then the flowers on the top, it's called Mound of Flowers, and it's made of glass. That was in 91. And then something that was also controversial, um, is the vacuum cleaner on the on the left. It's called the um, Hoover Celebrity 3, I think, just the name of the vacuum. Um, and yeah, he lit it up with the fluorescent lights in the back. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but, you know, that's another thing that was a ready-made object. One that he was inspired by is um, just that one. Um, there's a few more. There's another reflective animal balloon sculpture right there. Um, then I did want to talk about just the um, the blue the blue ball that you see in these. It's called a gazing ball, and apparently in Pennsylvania where he grew up, people had a gazing ball in their front yard. Um, it was just like a glass reflective ball on a stand, and they used to put those out in the yard for their neighbor to enjoy when they go by, and it was a way of people being generous to their neighbors. Um, so he, Coons talks about how art is being finished inside the viewer, so um, 
when he creates his reflective art pieces, he creates a mirror so that when you look at the art, you can see yourself in it and you visualize yourself. And so um, the art is finished within you. Um, that's his way of thinking at least, but um, everything is dependent on you. So when you move, the abstraction happens in that reflective piece. And if you're not there in front of that piece, then nothing's happening. Um, so I think that's the most interesting thing to me of Jeff Koons is the fact that the, he thinks the art isn't really made until the viewer puts themselves in it and sees themselves in the art. Um, so yeah, that's my presentation. Thank you for watching.